Internet traffic continues to experience phenomenal growth as demand for video hosting, big data analytics, and the proliferation of smart connected devices quickly grow. All this traffic must live somewhere, and that home is thousands of data centers spread throughout the world, each one relying on high-speed connectivity provided by millions of miles of fiber cabling. To achieve and maintain this growth, fiber cabling had to be standardized within data centers. That standard, TIA 942, which enables deployment of fiber and data centers, has recently been updated with the release of TIA 942B. Joining me today via Skype to talk about the importance of these standards is Jonathan Jew, President of j &M Consultants and Secretary of TIA's TR42 Cabling Systems Engineering Committee. Welcome, Jonathan, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks a lot, John. Let's just, if you could, just jump in and start from the beginning. What was the state of data center cabling prior to TIA 942 in 2005? Meaning, uh, data centers had been around, but prior to that, what was the, what was the importance of why we created 942? Well, before we had TI 942, uh, data center cabling was um, not so much structured as point-to-point uh, -point cabling. People typically ran cables between the devices that they needed to without any sort of structure. Um, it was also very common to use proprietary cabling back then. So data center cabling was pretty much of a, of a mess. It was very difficult to maintain, very difficult to troubleshoot. Great, and, and so you mentioned about the uh, proprietary technology. Were there other benefits to creating uh, this sort of industry-wide standard uh, you know, speed of, of data flow or other, other benefits from 942? Oh, absolutely. So with, the, with, the, with TI 942, we imposed a, a structured cable cabling system as we do in most other premises. And when you apply a structured cabling system, it's much easier to connect devices in the data center because all you need typically to do is install patch cords so you can deploy connections much more quickly. If you use standardized cabling, you can um, deploy different types of, of connections on your structured cabling without having to deploy proprietary cabling. And the structured cabling is much easier to troubleshoot and maintain, which means that your data center has much higher uptime. You know, I was looking up in preparation for this uh, interview, I looked up some uh, data, and uh, Cisco estimates that uh, cloud traffic will grow by 400% in, uh, to 14 zettabytes annually by the year 2020, which is a you know, uh, fair amount of data. Uh, keeping in mind these high growth rates, what's happened in the industry since the launch of TIA 942? Well, when we started uh, developing TI 942, the 100 megabit connection was a very common speed. Now, as we're developing TI 940, as we completed development of TI 942 B, uh, we were planning for connections as high as 100 gigabits per second and 400 gigabits per second. So, of course, the speeds that we support are much higher. Our data centers are are much bigger than they were in the past, and uh, there are there there are, there's much more cabling that we have in the data center, much higher speeds. Uh, we're, we're deploying much more optical fiber in data centers than we had in the past as well. So there's there's uh, um, quite a bit of, of uh, use of smaller diameter, higher speed connections to allow us to support all this massive data in the data centers. And as you, uh, as you just mentioned, Jonathan, we have just announced the release of uh, TIA 942B, uh, which is subsequent to the 2005 launch of TIA 942 itself. And, and you'll be talking about this at TIA's upcoming data center workshop on October 16th and 17th here in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, why, why is this release so important? Well, it's, we, we, we revise our standards every five years, so it's really due for an update. And uh, um, this update has a, a lot of important changes. Uh, we address data center fabrics in this update. We add new types of MPO connectors, the 2416 and 32 fiber MPOs. We add Category 8, we add OM5 wideband multi-mode fiber, we add support for broadband coaxial cable, we provide uh, guidance on the use of uh, optical fiber patch cords and other smaller diameter cables in things like wire basket trays, and we made uh, quite a bit of changes to the rating tables, which were previously known as the uh, 
the tiering tables. Mm. The, uh, if you think about uh, what the impacts are uh, for those who build and manage data centers, could you sort of isolate that for us? Well, um, almost, this, this is an important standard for anyone that designs and builds data centers or manages a data center because the telecommunications infrastructures is a key portion of your data center. So it's really important to have updated standards for your data center. And then the updated rating tables that I mentioned are of interest to almost anyone that designs uh, a, a data center. If you think, uh, Jonathan, about uh, the impacts to some of the largest customers of data centers, such as uh, service providers, businesses, consumers themselves, what, what sort of impacts uh, can we look forward to from 942B? Well, the, the, the people that have the largest data centers, the heaviest users of data centers, will be the first people to use these new type of connectors and cables that we've added to the standard. So this update was particularly important to them. Interesting, that's great. Now we'll continue to follow the progress of uh, data center infrastructure and the impact of industry standards. Uh, and so we appreciate you, Jonathan, coming out and speaking with us today uh, from California, where you're hail now uh, at the moment via Skype. Thanks for the opportunity, John. And thank you to our audience for joining us today. Don't forget to register for TIA's workshop on optimizing data center performance taking place here in Arlington, Virginia, October 16th and 17th. And you can find out more and register today at tiaonline.org. So long.